I want to give everyone an update. I spoke with my friend at the RPD. He says there was never a phone call from John Melendez that came into the Rochester Police Department. There's no record of it. They write down every name of everyone who calls in with any type of anything. And he says, I checked all the systems. There's, John Melendez does not exist in our system. He goes, unless he gave him a fake name. I go, no, he was bragging that the cop knew who he was from the Howard Stern show. Yeah, they were both named John. Yeah, no. and, and the costume was John, too. Yeah. Obviously, obviously, he used a fake name, and the detective that he talked to, being like a primo sleuth, was like, there's no way this is Rico Melendez. Yeah. Is this stuttering John Melendez? Like, oh, 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 you, oh, you, oh yeah, you uh, got me. You got me. I didn't want to tell you because I'm such a big celebrity. <laughs> I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be, uh, to get, um, I didn't want to be treated uh, differently. I Do you guys to want to get treated- you guys want to get a quick update on uh, our chemo friend? Please. Absolutely. fucking lutely Yeah. Chemo Christopher, we'll call him. He or she. <laughs> the good news, I'll tell you, is he's taking... Uh, he or she is, is <laughs> taking to the chemo. It's starting to work. So, it's starting to work. Which is great That's, news. The only I don't, downside, it's another... 12 chemo treatments, which is $300. So this person actually might set up a GoFundMe, and then you will all know who this person is. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that you'll, I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure as soon as you find out who this person is, you'll all, you'll all want to donate. And and I thank you for those who did donate, <laughs> and I did send every dime of it plus some to the person. I got a paper trail. <laughs> yeah, there's a paper trail. There's, there's a-, a paper trail. <sighs> I do believe that he may have sent a dime. What's great is that he says, <laughs> "Okay, he's got twelve more treatments. They're three hundred bucks a piece." Yeah. And my friend Drew Lane offered him. $2,500. Dr. Steve said, I'll chip in another 1000 That's $3,500 if John would take an IQ test against Anthony Cumia to see who's smarter. Because John put a tweet out saying that he's smarter than Anthony. And the reasons why is because John has two degrees. Mm-hmm. Now, one of uh, them is your associate's degree, which is once you get your bachelor's degree. And I'm talking about having two degrees. I have anymore. that in producing. I mean, look yeah, at me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's two degrees, which is insane. I told that to Drew. I was on their show yesterday. I go, do you know what his degrees are? What is his associate? He goes, oh, oh I just assumed it was a master. I'm like, no, no. John bragged about passing the realtor test. Mm. He bragged about passing the, the test to become a substitute a teacher, teacher, which people are posting sample questions from that yeah. online. It's hilarious. Yeah, anyway, I mean, we have test. teacher friends. We, we know how yeah. it is. <laughs> there well, was a, in that, in that same tweet, he says, uh, and I, ta- I taught algebra for about five weeks. Yes. Now, five weeks straight. I know. Yeah. I know we're all on Chrissy Mayer's side and we think teachers are all worthless. Uh, but <laughs> even t- worthless teachers teach for like, 16 or 18 weeks in a row before they take their summer vacation or their Christmas vacation, John. Like you did, you did five weeks. Like you didn't even do, you did half a semester. You did nothing. Correct. Correct. And actual, actual math teachers have to know like trigonometry and they might have to know like calculus. Like there's other things besides seventh grade algebra. And this guy's like, I'm obviously a math whiz. Like, well, <laughs> you're solving for X. Let's not get ahead of ourselves over here. It's not that impressive what you're doing. Could you solve for X, Carl? I could, yeah. Oh, okay. I couldn't. I'm not good at algebra. Yeah, I was good at that. But the, it's so hilarious to me that John would even consider himself smarter than Anthony Cumia because he goes, well, Anthony didn't even get a high school degree. Anthony has Neil deGrasse Tyson on his show and carries on a conversation for two hours with the guy that's extremely intelligent and enlightening to me because I don't know shit about science. Like, the guy is very bright. It, the fa- Listen, if it was Stuttering John versus Opie, I'd go, ah, all right. There's a chance. Yeah. There's a chance John can win this one, but John. So anyway, the point is, if he really cares about his friend and the chemo treatment and the money they need, the money's right there for you, John. Yeah. You put it out there. You're smarter than Anthony. Here's thirty five hundred dollars to prove it. That's it. That and, easy and for you, buddy. It's thirty five hundred dollars just to take the test. Just take the test. Not to win. Just take the test. Just, no. Just, just humble yourself. Yeah. For. For an hour? You only have to be smart enough to take the test. 
<laughs> yeah. And the money. <laughs> and, and Dr. Steve said he'll even pay for the test, whatever that costs. Yeah. I just want to see the questions. Me too. Like, Especially if could, it was Stunt Joe versus Opie. <laughs> you could save a man's life by taking one test. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine, like, the head that John would have? I'm like, oh, yeah, I, uh, I paid for their whole treatment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and sure, I only have an IQ of 89. I but, lost, uh, but I appealed. You know, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't lost yet. <laughs> I went back to the board of uh, cues, and I asked them to do more. Uh, John Delancey, uh, he's going to be talking to me. Holy shit. So... I was just on. Oh, and by the way, I should point this out too. So Drew tweets at John and says, "You know, after John put that tweet out, like, hey, buddy, here's twenty five hundred bucks if you take the test." John blocks him. Of and course, Drew, Drew goes, I've never, "I've never been blocked by anyone in my life. The one time I blocked, I'm offering someone twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> like, how does that make sense? <laughs> Such a moron." So I went on <laughs> Drew and Mike's show yesterday, and we did a whole beer on the balcony segment on there. Oh, cool. And I'm going to just do a couple things to overlap that to set this up because on Saturday he does his normal show and he had the uh, Richard Ojeda Mm -hmm. as the... I always have to look at you. (laughs) Did I say it right? (laughs) He had Richard Ojeda on as his guest for the entire two hours. And at the end of that, he's promoting his... (laughs) He's promoting beer on the balcony. And uh, he's excited about his guest he's going to have on beer on the balcony. Coming up right after this episode. Anyway, uh, I'm now going to go over to my uh, beer on the balcony with the great Rich Tallarico, who's got a hell of a bunch of stories to tell you. Uh, this is this is a fun little romp through our show business, our writing lives in show business, working for Jay Leno, and he worked for SNL. I worked for the Cream of Bill Jabbar roast, uh, <laughs> and he worked for Key and Peel. I worked for the Howard Stern Show. So there's, there's, it's just going to be a great, great show. John, he wrote for Key and Peele. You answered the phone at the Howard Stern show. You see the difference, right? No, he doesn't. Well, and, I know. He doesn't. <laughs> it's like it's they're so completely unrelated. Yeah. He wrote for the Key and Peele show, which has been it's over. It's the show's done. They've both gone their separate ways to do their own careers. But one of the funniest sketch comedy shows of all but, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, well beloved, well beloved. But yeah. it's even it's like ten years, less than ten years that show went off the air or was uh, started. It's it's pretty recent. He was on Howard Stern <laughs> yeah. when I was in fucking elementary school. <laughs> it's a good, that's a good point as well. But I like the way that he sets this up. He goes, coming up next, I got another comedy writer. I'm going to be telling stories. He's going to be telling stories. You know, I work for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He wrote for SNL. Same thing. Same diff. <laughs> we, we both got our war stories. So he starts off the episode. And this is the thing, because you were talking about Suli the week before. Oh, yeah. Like, John was having so much fun with it, but he didn't know why. Yeah. And he thought they were having, like, this really fun, funny conversation. But meanwhile, the guy's going, yeah, I got hired for affirmative action. You know, Barack Obama became president. They were like, <laughs> yeah, he was, he's cracking up over this shit. Didn't make any fucking sense. So John wants to continue all of that fun here. Yeah, the momentum he's got going. Yeah. So this is the introduction to Rich Tallarico. And now today... A good buddy of mine who I work with on The Tonight Show, another writer, Rich Tallarico. Whoa. All right. <laughs> Hi, pal. I tell you, Rich, being a writer on The Tonight Show, it's like, do you get any PTSD from that? <laughs> you know, I had a really good time there. I met so many amazing folks like yourself. Skull, John. <laughs> Isn't that great? He's like, whoa, we went to war together. We were in battle together. Yeah. Remember that? He's just like, no, it was a great time. He's like, I thought it was summer camp. You thought it was a battle? I'm <laughs> confused. Well, I got to go, a, John. Was, Sorry. Every, every, <laughs> we're every out time, of time I had to fight, I had to fight for my bits. I got a great bit. Uh, what if I went to have sex with a pretty girl? Uh, how is that funny, John? <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I, uh, uh, you know what? I pass. I, well, I saw Adam Sandler do it in all of his movies, and they're very popular. So <laughs> I thought maybe I could do that. Hey, how is this guy getting a hot chick? I know, right? That, that's the that's the joke. <laughs> that, yeah. And then we actually do it in real life. <laughs> all right. Easy for you to lay. <laughs> uh, Zing King strikes again. <laughs> so I think when people don't understand sarcasm, it's a sign of low intelligence. What do you mean by that? Yeah. This is 
Rich. Oh, you didn't understand? Rich is talking about how he went to SNL in the very first episode he wrote for Donald Trump. Mm. was the guest host mm. of the show. Now, tell me about your experience. So you wrote at SNL, and your first week was when Donald Trump was the host? Yes. Tell us yes. a little bit about that, Rich. Well, you know, uh, it was my first uh, week at the show, and, uh, you know, it's absolutely such a big week because you're really it's like going uh, into the wizard of oz's lair you know you're walking behind that curtain you're seeing everything so i it was you know a week i'll never forget but i guess the thing i wanted to mention to you because i know you're a big trump fan i know you're a trump supporter <laughs> i'm kidding, <You're> kidding right <laughs> sorry dry too dry uh, on that delivery no he's too uh, dumb I, yeah <laughs> not, you're not too dry <laughs> i can't I, 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 I can't have a trump supporter on my show Oh, as soon as he heard good. Trump, he's just like, uh oh, where, where is this going? What? Christ. Why that's he... what the that's the only PTSD that John has is hearing the word, oh, oh Trump. Oh, you know, he's like the principal in Beavis and Butthead. He's just constantly <laughs> like, oh, oh, Beavis and Butthead. Oh, oh, we got to oh, defeat oh, QAnon and oh, the GQP. Trump is carving penises into the desk again. <laughs> <laughs> a couple production notes for the viewers. Um, yeah. Don't put a ceiling fan behind your fucking head yeah. and don't itch your palm on Dude. camera if it itches. Do what I do. Itch it under the table. Under the table, yeah. <laughs> that You're down here itching your palm. It's totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> over and over. And over. <laughs> you suddenly stop. It's a good thing you have those beers in front of you, Tab, or we would have seen what you were really doing. <laughs> I really, I'm really tired of you shaming me for my... my th- my beliefs. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, who who itches their palm? First of all, that's a weird know. tell yeah. or whatever he's doing. He's nervous or something. But Don't yeah, you, you're right. he, whenever he's doing something with his hands, he has to bring them up in front of his face and show you what he's doing with his gross, disgusting hands all the time. <laughs> he can't help himself. Have you never never heard that old wives' tale about itchy palms? No. You get itchy palms from jerking off too much. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's like an old wives' tale. And yeah. there's hair on his palms too. Look. <laughs> and I just like to point out, you know, we're talking about John's batch now. <sighs> so talking yeah. about batch. It's been a several episodes and we talked about his batch. Get you the know, squeegee out, Chris. We gotta oh. start talking about his batch. We gotta clean things up. <laughs> All right. So, Rich goes through this whole story about how he learned from that experience that when you write sketch comedy for people who aren't performers you have to write the jokes into the people around that person because he tried to write this sketch for trump where he was playing monopoly with his buddies in college and he owned all the real estate he was being a dick to everyone and trump wasn't delivering the lines correctly and it wasn't funny it was flat but then the sketches that got on they would have trump just reacting to people who were saying funny things around him he goes through this whole thing and explains this learning experience he had there and john's follow-up question to that is insane it was a big lesson for me of like how to write for somebody that might necessarily not, you know, not necessarily be a performer. Yeah. Are, are you stoned right now? <laughs> stoned? No, I don't do that. Because your eyes look like you might be a little stoned. <laughs> That's what he said to the Asian yeah. guy that was on there. No, no I'm only, I, it doesn't matter. I get stoned all the time. Who cares? No, no not at all. Not at all. So, Why? sober as a judge. Uh, what? Look, that it, was on the verge of being an interesting, yeah, an interesting yeah. story. Like Correct. talking about, I don't like SNL, but I can imagine as a comedy writer, writing for you get they they book guests. They just want someone famous, mm-hmm. and maybe it's an actor who's not comedic, or maybe it's someone like Donald Trump who's not an actor. That could be a challenge, right? And John's just like, uh, you, did you smoke any weed today? Uh, visit my friends at my weed store and tell them uh, Stuttering John said well, you even if you 11%. Thought, even if you thought your guest who was on there does the same drugs that you do, like, talk about that after the show or, or you know, whatever. Like, you don't bring that up on the show. Like, by the way, kind of blow you get these days because the shit out here. <laughs> I'll tell you after. Yeah, right. After the show, I'm happy to tell you about the kind of blow that I've been getting. But not while we're actually doing the show. And it's funny, too, because to your point, Tab, he's bringing up something that's interesting for comedy writers. And he wrote for Key and Peele and he's written these great sketches and all this stuff. And later on in this interview, John runs out of things to talk to him about. He asks him where he's from twice, (laughs) which is which is always good. 
And this is always a, a good sign of an interview going very well. Rich tries to get out of the interview 30 minutes in. It's an hour long interview. <laughs> it's, yeah. And, uh, and thank you for giving me some time to talk about this today. Very much. Oh, no. We ain't done yet. We got another half an hour. <laughs> okay, great. I'll kick off my shoes. <laughs> as, as June Shear would say, I, I need John. I need to go get another drink. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? Mike, I really got to get a drink now. So. As they say in radio, <laughs> <laughs> that old radio expression. <laughs> He's oh like, I, I don't smoke weed. I'm not stoned, but I'm thinking about taking it up right now. So I'll uh, be rolling a joint. But uh, John good cannot read the room. He no. He does not. He has no like his perception ends at the end of his table. Yes, and that's why like his interview which is looks like your table. He's <laughs> yeah, just right. what are you talking about, producer Chris? It's, it's an audio format. Uh, he whenever he's doing these interviews, he's just like waiting. It's it's almost like um, in theater, people will do that. They don't really learn the other person's lines. They just wait for them to stop speaking. Sure. So they're like, oh, now I get to start talking. Oh, uh, you stop talking. So now I, 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 I have something to say. Yeah. Speaking of John being completely unaware of how he comes off. This is once again, because Rich is running to be a board member for the Writers Guild or something. And his whole thing is that he explains that they're giving this content away for free. So Key and Peele, you can watch every sketch they've ever done on YouTube. And he's like, for me, being a writer, I don't make any residuals off that. It's just on YouTube. And the networks are putting it up there to promote it, but it's kind of fucking over the writers. Goes through this whole thing. And John, of course, has to make himself the hero. And he did something so amazing. John sent an email out. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. And he is very impressed with himself. <laughs> we got a bad well, ass just, over here. Well, as you know, I... I did a mass email to all of our writers. I had all their emails and I sent it out. Vote for Rich Tallarico, you know, so. It, yeah, no, I, I owe you. You really uh, jump right in and. Uh, of course, man. Uh, dude, you really dude, jump right you know, in and make yourself the hero. My <laughs> mantra in life, Rich, has always been, uh, you know, uh, here I'm here to help people because <laughs> what else am I fucking here for? Get you drunk. know what I mean? Like, I like <laughs> that's to help a really people. good question, I mean, John. <laughs> like, in anything. Yeah, I'm writing that one out. Yeah. <laughs> and that actually, that's the question you should probably ask yourself at some point. Like, what are you here for? Because <laughs> you're not helping anyone. <laughs> how many How many of those texts do you think the response was, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those emails coming back. Like getting this, lose this my, email. Lose my email address, please. Please stop talking to me. I, I love that he says, you know, the question is, what am I here for? He probably says that when he walks in the bar, like, we know, Coors Light. All right, sit down. We'll get it for you. <laughs> you know what I'm here for. Yes, we know what you're here for. He's a pitcher. Are your friends showing up this time? All right. <laughs> like a taste so one glass. <laughs> yeah, pitcher with one glass. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll drink out of both glasses. <laughs> you you just drink straight out of the pitcher, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. I what am I gonna do? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pour. I'm not gonna pour. I'm gonna pour in my mouth <laughs> to help people. I mean, like in anything, because it don't. I mean, like I, I think that's why we're here. I really, I really right. think we're supposed to be. I think we're here to be better people. Then why are you laughing? Yeah, even then why Rich, are you here? Even Rich is just like, are we doing this right now, John? Yeah. Are you really taking full credit for sending out an email and telling people to vote for me because we work together on the night show? Like, okay. Uh, Rich, Rich, uh, you, I, 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 I sent an email. You, 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 uh, you owe me. You owe, you me. owe me. And guess what, John uh, is going to do for Rich now? He's going to tell him tales. Send him of, some weed <laughs> of his amazing <laughs> you career. Remember that bit I wrote on the Tonight Show. Uh, that you know, it was great. Oh, I so that, by the way, this is a continuation of what I did with Drew and Mike yesterday. If you're on our Patreon, you get that episode. But if you don't, if you're not, go to Drew and Mike's show from September 13th. I did about an hour on this interview. This is the second half of it because John takes so much credit for everything that he accomplished on the Tonight Show. This guy is sitting here going, "Look at it. not every joke you write is going to be great." So I tried to come up with tons of jokes so that Jay could pick out a few that he could use, but it really wasn't even my strong point. I wasn't even that good at it. And John's like, "Oh, I was great at it. I did everything. Uh, I got a lot. All my jokes had on the monologues. Like it's so insane." And this poor guy is sitting through that. That's why 25 minutes in, he's tapping out like, all right, well, great. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, no, we got another half hour. Because, <laughs> well, because I, it's, it's not an interview. There's no, yeah. It's not like it's just waiting for Rich to stop talking so that John can tell his yep. stories. Yep, here's an example. And I'm, I'm sure Rich 
is a, I mean, he sounds like an interesting enough guy. I would watch an interview with him. Yeah, yeah, he's had a, he's had a good career writing comedy. He should go on. He should go on comedy at the Carlson to talk to a real interviewer. Yes, who's who would that be? Oh, I, uh, I guess you're talking about Vinny Paulino. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to get in Vinny's good graces. <laughs> Why would you, anyone want to do it's that? Possible. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't want to get eaten. Uh, I sold the movie that I wrote, The National Lampoon, and it came out. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> called One Too Many. Uh, okay. it, it wasn't very well received by the critics. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Who cares? It was so low budget, Rich. I mean, we literally made it for $500,000. But I had Jeff Ross on. <laughs> That's also low budget. What did you say, John? <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is some flex right there, isn't yeah. it? I made a movie. No one liked it. And we didn't have any money to spend on it. I'm sorry, John. No, why my, why'd you bring favorite, that up? <laughs> my, my favorite part of that was, I was like, we made it for $500,000. <laughs> yeah, Rich goes, what? Yeah. What did you say? Jesus <laughs> Rich is like, I'm never drinking or smoking pot. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. What is what are, why why is, is he so gross? Why is he so gross? He's such a gross individual. Why does he have no tolerance? He drinks every day and then he's, he gets three beers in on beer on the balcony and he chugs them. Don't get me wrong. No, he gets no, three beers no. in and he's annihilated. I know. Are you you're talking mis- about Tabber? <laughs> God damn it, Chris. Your mistake is thinking that that's beer number three. Okay. That's beer 13. Yeah, that seems like it. He's drinking. I, I post in the Discord a lot. Like, I'll take the. We have a chords emoji in the WTP Discord. <laughs> yeah. I will post that emoji three times because it's a six pack. That's 18 beers. 18 beers a day is what John is like. That's his maintenance dose. Right. As, right. as someone who understands like functional alcoholism, yeah. you have to like drink your maintenance dose. Otherwise you're dead. So my guess is when beer on the balcony launches, he's already six or eight beers in. And then he's starting to get a buzz by the time he's got his guest on because he's like, he's a full blown fucking alcoholic. Sure. You were talking about before the show really started that he, someone was saying that he leaves Pickwick pub at 7 PM <laughs> fucking hammered. Yeah. I, m- I met someone and- out in LA who used to run into John at Pickwick and John would be blackout drunk at seven o'clock when this guy was going yeah. in. And I'm still on East coast th- time. <laughs> <laughs> it must I, be can't, I can't figure out the times. You know, I, <laughs> Uh, there's there's a new Discord beer on the balcony where we like talk about John. If you're if you want to join, I'm sure someone will post the link. Um, and one of the channels is just a, a like list. It's it's a bot that reads John's Twitter. And I've noticed because I never really paid attention to John's Twitter until that Discord popped up. He will like get up at 10 a.m. and tweet frantically until about one or two in the afternoon, uh-huh. and then it just cuts right the fuck off. <laughs> he's got other things he's to in do. the pub, fucking yeah. putting them down, blah blah blah. And then like he's not, he doesn't have time to play on his phone, right? And then he's blackout drunk. Sometimes you'll get a couple in the like late afternoon where he's like probably like sitting there at the bar, just like oh, oh, oh someone tweeting about Matt Gates. I gotta, you know, he's in a public, I gotta tweet that shit. And it's become like a fascinating window Interesting. into his life that I didn't have prior to that Discord existing. So uh, if you're interested in join, John, join that that Discord and someone post the link because I'm fucking, I'm not doing that. It's I mean, on our website, right? It's or, is, your Discord's on the website. Oh, the beer this on the is the other Discord. Is, yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the, yeah, let, me, yeah. let me also say this. Let me say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the beer on the balcony Discord is not related to WATP no, in any form not. of fashion. Yes. And any opinions of members of the Discord are the opinions of the members of the discord and not WATP as a whole. So if someone's on there, you know, someone like a guy named Tav from HWIDG that's posting all kinds of like random shit. Uh, that is not Carl's opinion. That is Tav from HWIDG's opinion. Also, is- Oh, and someone just posted it, a link to it in uh, the discord chat. We're just here yeah. in the live show channel. Uh, also, I want to point out, you said you live in St. Louis. I do, I do. Yeah, so can you give the rest of your address? Because John will be definitely suing oh, you for libel I, and slander after what I you just said. I almost know where you live. <laughs> I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy. Like, you know how you have, you have like a movie and you have a spinoff and you have the one guy show up from the spinoff mm-hmm. to, to give it credibility? Of course. I want to be the guy from the original lawsuit that's also in lawsuit, oh, too. Oh, yeah. That's what get I'm shooting for. Get served twice. That'd be, well, you didn't get served the first time, but yeah, I hear you. I did get served the first time. 
first time and I'm not getting served the second time, but I'm going to show up and I'm going to be like, hey, Carl, you know, you keep fighting the good fight. All right. I got to go back to being like a real star. And, and... <laughs> I, I love you. I love you when Anthony, I hopefully everybody watched it. He put, he put it up on YouTube, which was great. Anthony did 68 oh, minutes on Stuttering John, was a, begging yeah. him to sue him. And Anthony goes, John, I beg you. I want someone to come into these doors and serve me. And you know what? I will not show up to court. I yeah. will not pay you. I will not acknowledge this. <laughs> yeah, I will not acknowledge it. Yeah. Go ahead and sue me, idiots. It was great. It I was wanted to. I, I was hoping that yeah. like you would play it's it on cathartic. the show, but it's it was it was too cathartic. big. Like I listened yeah. to the whole thing. It is great. Uh, the other day, it was he, oh he was fantastic. He was fantastic talking about <sighs> stuttering John. So great. anyway, yeah, um, join those discords. They're great. Uh, and. The great part about Clamoring Carl, the uh, Discord account that's posting images from your Discord, or not your Discord, just a Discord that's maybe like kind of associated with uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I found a life hack to get retweeted by Stuttering John. I don't even have a Twitter. Wait. He's retweeting my tweets about him. I don't oh, even have a Twitter. you just posted in the Discord. Yeah, I'm just in the Discord. Just and like, then it shows John's up on a Twitter. a retard and a faggot, and it shows him I'm fat <laughs> on, on Twitter. And I'm just like, what are you, an idiot? That is the secret to success right there, it's my so friend. Great. It's yeah. so great. That's I hilarious. Mean, I, will, I screenshot those posts and send them to my friends, and I'm just like, check this shit out. I'm getting retweeted by Stuttering John. Uh, world famous. He's world famous. That is that is hilarious. Follow Tab for more tips. All right. <laughs> so John finally said something I agree with. How many years has it been, Producer Cress? Finally, there's something that, like, if him and I ever had a conversation, this is where I would start. Like, all right, we do have one thing in common. Syracuse is dreadful. Agreed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know that one. Yeah. Very good. All right. So then he John. Probably, to, to be fair, he's probably so drunk he thinks you live there. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. No, it, the, the funny part is, is that Rich says, I grew up in upstate New York between Syracuse and Albany. So he's probably from like a suburb, Utica or something, a suburb of Syracuse. It's and a Utica John, thing. Yeah, and John immediately goes, oh, Syracuse fucking sucks. He's just like, oh, okay. You know, he's, he's like, Rich has family there and stuff. He's like, oh, okay. And then, the he, final insult in yeah, this interview. Jesus. And then, and then John goes, he goes, the reason why he hates it there, because Rich goes, there's the worst places than Syracuse, which I don't know, maybe. And then uh, maybe Gary. And then John goes, well, I, just, I did a stand-up gig there, and it was terrible. I'm like, well, that's not Syracuse's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About my jokes, Bob, in Syracuse. Right. <laughs> and Jacksonville and Tampa yeah. and L.A. and uh, Tustin and also Nevada. Like, where do your jokes not suck, John? Yeah. All right. So this, this is interesting because stuttering John, for whatever reason – He's just reading Rich's IMDb page. because, Well, not for whatever reason. He's trying to figure out what to talk to him about because he didn't prepare for this at all. So this is actually him improving his prep skill. Yeah, right. He's, at least he's reading <laughs> something fair. on the fly. That's amazing. But try to figure out what the question is. Because okay. usually when you have someone on your show, you want to ask them. Oh, there's a new game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> That's awesome, Rich. I mean, uh, and uh, uh, let's see, you were an actor in on uh, Conan, and I, I, I actually did a bit on Conan with Gilbert Gottfried, but I was a guest on Conan. Even my band played on Conan. I was their go-to. If they, if, like, they had like a falling out of a guest, hey, John, you want to come on? And I, I think I did like seven guest appearances on the Conan O'Brien show. All right, let's play the game. <laughs> what was the question? Because he stopped talking. <laughs> so I loved Conan. As yeah, a, me too. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. There was like I I never really got into Jay Leno, but I love Conan show. Yeah. When he went to the Tonight Show, I it, it, like he lost his edge, and maybe that's and so since then I he's kind of like diminished in my eyes. I watched Conan. I had. So let's, you know, rewind 20 years. I had a portable TV that was, you know, four inches in diagonal. Mm -hmm. You could hold it in your hand. That's how small it was. Two and of Chris's stay... penises. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I would stay up late at night and I would have that little TV in my bedroom. And I'm, I'm in middle school and high school with my headphones in. And, I'd be, and I would stay up late to watch Conan. Yep. 
early 2000s, you know, 2002, 2003, I, I had no idea who Stuttering John was until I listened to your show. Well, what's great, though, is he says, I, I used to do Conan all the time, but because he was a fill-in guest. So he just lost all credibility. He wants to be like, I was on that show seven times. That would be impressive unless he lives down the street and someone canceled at the last minute. They're like, fuck. John, you want to come fair. in with your stupid shitty band again? Or can we do something? Do you know anyone who's got nothing going on that we can get in here? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... I'm surprised that John did this because normally he makes it about the guest, but for some reason <laughs> he decides to go through his resume. What? To Rich Tellerico. This is just this last Saturday. <laughs> it, you know what? Uh, like, that's like, you know, just for me, I feel I lived a charm life. Like, I got to work and write for Howard Stern. Look at Rich's reaction. I got like, to yeah. meet a ton of celebrities. You're doing it all, buddy. And go to a ton of free concerts. <laughs> free concerts. And then I get a record <laughs> deal. I get to tour the country with all these. That's a new one, by the way. Of all the humble brags, I got to go to free concerts because I worked <laughs> yeah. at a radio station. And I got a t-shirt. <laughs> hey, I don't want to brag. I got to go to free concerts because I worked. As a stagehand, so yeah, in a theater, so I you used to stay. stay in hotels. They would offer me soap. <laughs> I, got I the, refused. I got <laughs> my OCD wouldn't let me take it. <laughs> I got to open for Ozzy Osbourne and, and Motley Crue and yeah. Jeepers. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Jeepers. Did you get open for the Misfits? Then I, you know, then I, yeah. What about the Misfits? <laughs> <laughs> I opened for the Misfits, motherfucker. Or what some version cows, of them. One of Man Cow's favorite bands, by the way. Oh, fuck your face, Stuttering John. Hey, hey, don't you. So he says, I opened for Ozzy. I opened for Motley Crue. <laughs> and Motley Crue and Jeepers. I didn't know that. That's amazing. And Collective Soul. And then I... I would have left that last one off the list. You know, you either build to Ozzy no. or just leave Collective Soul off the list. <sighs> I think we can Come book on. Collective Soul to play with us in Detroit. The ASOs are playing in Detroit, by the way, Rich. October 1st. Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention Yeah, we should mention that. We'll do it later. All right. And uh, <laughs> Rich, it looks like he's reading his Wikipedia page. <laughs> it's starting to dawn on him what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then I go on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And, you know, and then I become a guest on Jay Leno. And then they love me. And then yeah, and they offer me a job. It's just like, it's like, you know, and I'm a stutterer who becomes the announcer. On, on the biggest late night fucking talk show in the world. And, yeah, and sometimes you're directing Quentin Tarantino. Or... Yeah, it's just like, you know, I think good things happen to good people. You know what I mean, Rich? Like, so what happened to you, John? Yeah. Yeah. Why do those good things happen to you? You are not evidence of that. You're an asshole. Nicholas Cage. <sighs> Could you imagine if you were interviewing John for a job and he sat down and you went, John Melendez, tell me about yourself. Wrong question. Oh, fuck. Right. Why did I say that? Going to be here all day. Oh, no. And then came third grade. <laughs> yeah. You ever heard of a trumpet? Yeah, I know what a trumpet is, John. <laughs> well, I happen to have one right now. <laughs> you know, I, I just got done with the interview process in my job. Yeah. And, you know, we interviewed several people, different backgrounds. And one of the things, most of them, the candidate we picked talked about experience that had happened like in the last two to five years. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. But you know, I had this experience at this place doing this technical thing. I had experience at this place doing this technical thing. And we had a couple people that were like, yeah, when I was in high school, I took care of this technical thing. <laughs> and just, <laughs> yeah. I don't and care. We, we picked a candidate based on like experience <laughs> and qualifications and all these things. The people that talked about their high school experience, not the top of the list. I was the Senator guy who, who wheeled in the VCR into the classroom. Oh, and the yeah. sub was then. Wow. Okay. I falutin. Centering <laughs> John with his, like, uh, in uh, the third grade, uh, my teacher wrote in my report <laughs> yeah. card. In fact, I, I think I have it here question. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Like, you got to move on. So, John, at the end of that, says, I love to charm life, but good things happen to good people. It's just karma. Mm -hmm. And then he needs to follow up with that by explaining what a great guy he is. Oh, well, you yeah, know, he's a great guy. you said you wrote a bit for Key and Peele, hmm? substitute teacher. Yeah, that would have been the time to segue to the story, John. He <laughs> brings this up 20 minutes later. He's like, remember you were talking earlier? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when COVID happened, all my stand-up gigs got canceled, <sighs> right? Well, COVID's over. Why are your stand-up gigs canceled now? Because <laughs> <laughs> he sucks. Right. So, so I had two teacher friends of mine. 
who went, John, we need subs. Become a sub. I go, well, I go, how do I do that? And they go, well, all you got to do, do you have a four-year degree? I go, yeah. Do you have good grades? Yeah. <laughs> do you have good grades? Okay. I, get what <laughs> I have to take this test called the CBS, <laughs> but it's a four-hour exam, Rich. It's not easy. It is easy. But I took it and aced it. And but believe it or okay. not, I'm a substitute teacher every once in a while. Wow, that's great. Oh, this is something else that's funny. So, first off, you don't know how well you did. It's a, it's a pass-fail kind of a thing. They're not, not going to tell you, oh, wow, you did amazing on this test. And uh, Drew's been talking about this. It's like, this isn't a hard test, right? So, someone actually messaged Drew, who's a substitute in California, who took this test. He's like, yeah, it's not difficult at all. It's a very easy test. Well, and it's not like, um, so you probably haven't taken the driver's test in a while, but when I took the driver's test, it was all computer. That was my way of calling you old. Uh, I just said, uh, it has been a while when, since I took a driver's test. Yes, that's when correct. I, when I took the driver's <laughs> test, it was it was a digital thing. You like went to a computer screen yeah. and you have to get, I, I don't remember what the score was. You had to get like 75 or 80% to pass yeah. to get your like permit. And the when it was computerized, when you hit, 75 percent it would just go like you passed right i can ask you the last five questions yeah because you got, we got you, you yeah you, you, no, you already hit the no exit grade. interview or anything yeah. like that i'm sure this was like a <laughs> fill in the bubble shit and then yeah. you know the next week they call you and go like uh is this john melendez congratulations you can be a substitute teacher can you teach algebra for five weeks oh well uh, let me rearrange my schedule uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's not it's not something to brag about like no. if you didn't accomplish anything it's your lucky yeah. day i'm free <laughs> john we randomly picked through 35 winning applications <laughs> so uh, one of the test questions that i saw online from this test they give you two six digit numbers and you have to find a number that's in between them from the multiple choice. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. It's not even Sign me up. <laughs> it's not even math. It's counting. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, if you back it up two seconds, Rich seems surprised <laughs> that he passed that test. Get naced it. And believe it or not, I'm so strategic. He goes, you did it. He goes, wait a second. You passed it? Yeah. I you're sure? talking about someone uh, else. All right. So now John is talking about the reason why the kids discover that he's a celebrity when he's teaching their class. Now, do the kids know that you're stuttering John, or do they just think, oh, this is Mr. Melendez? It's so funny, Rich, because you know what happens? <laughs> Great. Kids are fucking way more advanced than we were when we were kids. They immediately see me, hear my voice, see that like I'm kind of a performer as a teacher, you know, they, oh, no. like they feel, and then they look it up. Mr. Melendez, what's your first name? And I said, John. And then two minutes later, are you stuttering, John? <laughs> yeah. Are you really an asshole? They see I that would... he's a performer, <laughs> yeah. and they go, wait a second, this guy must be a celebrity. I think he meant buffoon. <laughs> yeah. I will bet money. He walks into the classroom, and he's got his piece of chalk there. My name is uh, Stuttering S. <laughs> T-U-R. He just stutters uh, when he has, writes. Um, uh, my stutter, John Melendez. Uh, you know, Google it. Google yeah. it. Oh, yeah. No, we actually know this for a fact because there was a kid who was tweeting about this, and John yeah. told the kids to Google his name. Yeah. Google me. Such a fucking liar, and it's such a pathetic flex anyway. Even if that were true, I wouldn't bring it up, no. but he has to tell you how much the kids love the way he teaches his class. Even though I'm teaching algebra, you know, if I cancel a reciprocal, I'm like, boom. And the kids all fucking laugh. They all love it. Again, it's bam. That's pretty yeah. cool. And also, <laughs> Mr. Melendez, what happened to you? Dude, <laughs> again, I want to bring your attention to Rich. He doesn't know what to do with this information. <laughs> no. John is bragging about teaching algebra as a substitute teacher. Rich used to w work with this guy at the Tonight Show. He's still in yeah, show business. Like, what am I doing here? Yeah, and watch his reaction to this. <laughs> he literally goes, cool. <laughs> yeah, neat. And the kids all fucking laugh. They all love it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yep. I'm the Emerald Lagasse of math classes. So I think... Another person that everyone has forgotten about. So I think John finally realizes that... He shouldn't just be talking about himself this whole time. So he starts asking Rich some questions okay. about Rich. 
So Rich is answering those questions. He's telling them about how he got his start and, and all these different things. And he can tell that John is tuned out. He's reading his chat. He's not paying attention. Oh, I He's love being, this. Oh, I love this, too. He's being very rude. I toured with Second City's National Tour. I wrote a bunch of shows for them. And uh, you know, spent about 10 years in Chicago as an improviser and an actor. And um, stop me if you want to, you know, change directions here. But I'm just kind of walking you through, you know, what that experience was like. No, then- I'm glad you are. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Yeah. It, it, Rich is just like, am I boring you? Do you want to, what do you want to talk about? You want to grab another beer? What do you want to do? <laughs> Rich should just keep going like, yeah, I spent 10 years in Chicago doing blah, 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 blah. And, and I started to get the impression that uh, the person who was interviewing me wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just keep yeah. talking like that yeah, and right. see how long he can play that. I for. worked with the buffoon of the Tonight Show. No one respected <laughs> yeah. him. Oh, no funny. shit. Yeah, okay. Uh, Whoa, who was that? I, I worked at the Tonight Show. <laughs> Thank you, Benny Loco. <laughs> Thanks, right. Fudge Nickel 2019, for the two bucks. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what were you saying, Rich? It was not paying attention. So then they're talking about going to auditions because Rich has gone to auditions for different things. And you'll be shocked to hear how John feels about auditioning. I also I learned doing those do auditions. It. You know, when you do auditions, and John, I'm Sick. sure you've done your share of auditions. You know, you I, hate I hate them. I hate them. But I found something. Maybe this will help in the future and help you and other actors that are listening. Because, you know, when you walk out of an audition, that's usually when you figure out how to do it. Yep. As soon as you walk out the door, that's, oh, yeah. that's what I should have done. Yes. See, Ted picked up on the same thing. John has no idea what he's talking about, but wants to belong. He's like, I'm in show yeah. business. So he's like, you know, how, like after you audition, you realize he's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. I'm also in show business. We talk, can we talk about substitute teaching again? Because I don't. That's what I actually do now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can. I, I think John is so. Um, it was Doctor Steve. They you brought him on. He talked to you like diagnosed John with narcissistic comp- compensatory compensatory narcissism. Yeah. Right? I'm not a scientist. I can't pronounce words. Uh, <laughs> But so John is like, do you think John is willing to go to an audition to just an open audition? Hey, we want to like find a buffoon who's a drunk. He's kind of pathetic. He's kind of like fat and old. <laughs> he hasn't had any career prospects in a while. He's down you on know? his luck. Things aren't turning <laughs> around anytime soon. He lives in like a shitty condo. He's trying to sell to make some money so that he can drink more Coors. Uh, we want someone like that for our show. And he's just like. Uh, I'm uh, no, I'm John Melendez. Uh, you know, people should know who I am. Do you have any Melendez. openings for a super famous, successful guy from show business? But but let me tell you, you know, I, I, I have a show. I think I, I think I, you know, I wrote. I think Hulu should pick it up. Like, okay, send us the script, John. Oh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of it's in process. Uh, you know, <laughs> he doesn't have anything. He has nothing to offer anybody. So Rich sent over John this A and W root beer commercial that Rich was in, going back to probably the '80s, and I actually remember this commercial when it was running. And John plays it, and then they talk about it, and then because John has nothing to talk about and has to fill this time, he decides to play it again. And I can't imagine what's going through Rich's mind when he's going, "Oh my God, we're watching this again. This is so bad." All right, I gotta play this one again because because I actually enjoyed it. Because <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I love your look at the end. <laughs> Mr. Dumbass, I can bring a lot to we'll Dumbass and Dumbass. Yep. I'm a go getter. Dumbass material all the way. So, am I your man, Mr. Dumbass? The name is Dumas. <laughs> That's pretty thick, head. <laughs> But nothing compared to the rich, thick, frosty mug taste of an A&W root beer. With A&W, it's good to be thick-headed. What a dumbass. <laughs> and then, of course, John's got old Howard Stern stuff queued up and running. I love it, bro. Great job, man. Great Thank you, job. Buddy. Thank you. Great job, man. That thing Great. you did 35 years ago was really good. Yeah. Congratulations. You, uh, you did it. You did it. Uh, You've done there it all. There was like a streamyardception there where we had like it was us on the side and then John yeah. and Rich on the side and then their actual video. We do that a lot. We do that a lot yeah. over here. Yeah. So I don't watch the show. I just listen to it. Poor, like everybody poor Rich. else. 
Can you imagine having to sit through your? He already sat through it once, and, and then John's like, "Wow, that was really good." He's like, "Okay, I know. Thanks, appreciate John it." John loves it because he got the joke. <laughs> John, <laughs> it's not good enough for John to live glory days. He wants you to also live glory days while yes. you're on his show. Like you have to be there to to laugh along, and it's not most of the time. I gotta say that like there's some points there for John in actually playing Rich's bit as opposed to him just being like, remember when I wrote that bit on the Tonight Show that was, you know, but, we, but we made, Tab, I'm telling you, laugh. I'm telling you, seventy percent of this was John talking about John though. I mean, very rarely. Oh, I believe it. No, no, it, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you you pull the you pull the choice clips. Don't get me wrong, uh, but like. That is, it, you got to put a point in, in John's column. Of course, there are 300 million points in the column where John sucks. But he should be doing that the whole time, Tab. He, he barely yeah. does it. <laughs> All right, so this is what I was talking about where John gets really drunk by the end of the show. And how embarrassing for him. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine being drunk on the internet? Can you imagine drinking <laughs> so many beers? Yeah. All right. So ridiculous. This is uh, this is John just drunken rambling, and poor Rich just like what the fuck? Because they're talking about TV shows. They like that is that is that is. I I never thought of the honeymoon as that way, but I will. I'm the first one to say this, at least. To my knowledge, and I said it on the Stern Show, and you know they were like, "Oh wow, we never thought about that." But you know, because I'm big into names in you know in uh, literature and you know and in movies, and I, and I've always said, "What's Ralph's last name?" You're asking me. Yeah. yeah. Cramden. Well, I think it's Cramden. Am I am I wrong? Cramden. Now, now, and now think for a second. He's crammed into a suit. Oh, He's yeah. crammed into a small apartment. You know, it's just I, like Willie Lowman, you know? You're right. I never thought of that. That's really, that's creepy that I never picked up on the crammed in. And also, have you ever thought about Arby's? Yeah. <laughs> what about Luke Skywalker? Did you ever think about that? It's did, so did, profound. Did, did you ever think about how Ajax is uh, cleaner and it's stronger than Greece? Like, <laughs> did, you, did you ever put that one together? Poor Rich, man. <laughs> Holy, Holy shit. It's like, the, he must have felt like he had just babysat for an hour. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> These fucking kids. <laughs> Honey, you would not believe my day. <laughs> All right. I am getting real late to band practice, so I'm going to put it into turbo right now. You mean <laughs> rock combo <laughs> rehearsal? Yeah, I got I got uh, rock rehearsal coming up. Um, we're recording next week, so oh. I know. It's not good. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-E.